So I'm David Little with the North Valley Community Foundation. I'm here with several key members of the Chico Posse Foundation, which became a fund under North Valley Community Foundation in January of 2016. Um, it started um, with House of Hope, which is a successful program helping uh, women and children with transitional housing through the Jesus Center. And the Posse Foundation rose for, from that. So Shelly, um, I was hoping you could talk about, was the Posse Foundation just a community-wide expansion of what you were doing with House of Hope, or was it something more than that? Well, back in 2013, when we originally had the idea to open House of Hope, it, it started with, let's just open this house to help others. And then through that program, what happened is, different individuals, different companies, different businesses within the community rose up and said they also wanted to help. So I just thought it was pretty interesting that it really wasn't something we were doing. I always thought of it as a community house. Somebody offered, put in landscaping. Somebody delivered flowers every month for a year. Somebody delivered their first meal. When the women moved in, people helped flip that house, stage that house, purchase items for the house. So for me, it um, it is under the umbrella of the Jesus Center, but I could not have done it without the posse, right? This is where we kind of started, oh, this is what we do. And then it became so much more. And, and Peggy, the Posse Foundation really became well known to everybody in our community after the campfire. How did the campfire change what you all were doing? It really moved us from 50 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour because our job was keeping people out of homelessness, which meant an occasional paying of a PG&E bill or, you know, doctor's bills or whatever it took, uh, down payments for people to get into housing and, and things like that. When it turned into disaster relief, it upped our workload a hundred times more than it than it really was. Um, so we were all working full time and doing this disaster relief. So it was sort of still keeping people housed. It was just a much, much broader reach. And um, we went from doing, you know, maybe a grant every other week to 300 grants in a month. So we got to the point where we actually had to shut the grant program down because we didn't have the funds to deal with it. It had become so much bigger than the posse. So um, it was really, really rewarding. And I think all of us really enjoyed what we did, but it was very taxing on all of us. And Lori, the, um, the, 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 the Posse Foundation is big on accountability. And we knew at the Community Foundation that we could give you a box full of gift cards and you would get them in the hands of fire survivors. What's, what was the vetting process like to ensure that um, all of these uh, resources that you were given ended up in the hands of fire survivors? Well, it was pretty detailed. Um, we a lot of it started off on Facebook because that's how people contacted us. And that's that was our main source of contact because it was a, a free avenue for us to use to contact people in general. But with Campfire, we directed through North Valley Community Foundation, people were directed to our Facebook. So we would kind of um, do a lot of research off of there. There's a lot you can find out about somebody on Facebook. And we're all very connected to the community. So if it was something that we weren't too sure about, we'd do some asking around. And we vetted out anybody, just like we have always done with the Posse. We are very careful to vet people, be good stewards of our donors' money. Um, and people know that, and that's why they want to donate, and that's why they want us to help, because they know we're going to make that extra effort. Or uh, talk a little bit about the, the foundation itself and the makeup of the foundation. Um, other than the obvious fact that you all were women, what else did you have in common that brought you together as a group? Well, it, you know, like we talked about, it kind of started with House of Hope, but I, it's all, it's all been a God thing, how he's just kind of pushed us into all these different avenues. And I think at first we didn't see it and, um, took us a while to realize it, but then we look back and think about things like when I worked at, with Shelly at the Jesus Center and we would have some random friend walk in with an extra large jacket because he didn't need it anymore. And five minutes later, somebody comes in looking for an extra large jacket. 
it would, somebody would bring one of us a couch and um, we would take it because we knew we were instantly going to have someone else that needed it. And so we, this kept up so much that it was overwhelming. And we ended up getting a warehouse and having a warehouse full of furniture and all these things just exploded. And we just kind of followed, followed the message. And we all, um, I think we were all in it for the greater good. And we were all about helping people. So it wasn't really about having any other commonalities, even though we've all became the best of friends. And, and you use the word overwhelming there. I'm sure it was. Um, Holly, could you talk about how difficult it was? I mean, you're all full-time people, full-time workers, and here you are taking yeah. on this volunteer position that was another full-time job. Yeah, everyone had their full-time jobs, um, but also families that we had to take care of. Some of us had to take care of our parents. Some had kids in sports. Mm -hmm. Some had other issues going on. So it was very overwhelming in that part. But luckily, um, during the campfire, our posse, Debbie Adams, jumped in. And at that point, she was able to do more than we could do because we were all a little exhausted, a little overwhelmed, and she was brand new. So she jumped in and helped us wherever we needed help. And Peggy, what was and that the warehouse Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Holly. No, it's OK. The warehouse was a little overwhelming also because everyone's working. And people can only go to the warehouse at certain times. And there always has to be one of us to meet us there. And, you know, what's in the warehouse and people, oh my gosh, people wanted to donate all the time. It was a blessing. We couldn't done any of this without the community. There's no way. And, and aside from the logistics of putting all that together, Peggy, what was it like emotionally um, dealing with such trauma? Honestly, the emotional toll on all of us was bone crushing. I, I, I think I can speak for all of us and say that we all had secondary PTSD from it. Um, anybody that you gave gift cards to, and we had the blessing. I mean, you mentioned a box of gift cards. It was like a pallet of gift cards. I, we figure we gave out about $250,000 in total. And um, everybody that you gave gift cards to had a story to tell and they had to talk it through because that's how they processed it. So they would talk it through with us and we'd cry with them. And um, you almost established like a, a mini relationship with these people. You know, we heard stories of how they drove through fire and their kids were at school and their mom was in the Kmart parking lot and they didn't have a signal. So they didn't know if she was alive. Somebody's son saw a deer running down the skyway on fire and was traumatized by it. So we all honestly paid a big price for it. It was well worth it. And there's no question about that. And we were too busy to ever argue about it, <laughs> which was really good because, you know, people get testy when they get overworked and stressed and, and all that. But um, we made it through and um, it was really a rewarding experience to look back on. It sounds like you all were kind of de facto disaster case managers, but it's interesting um, that Lori uh, was one of two that became an actual case manager. Lori, was that much different than what you were doing with the Posse Foundation? Yeah, it was quite a bit different because the posse was that immediate relief. Like Peggy said, we were meeting people literally as they came down the skyway. We had people coming to strangers coming to our house, meeting people at gas stations. We had collective times where we all met and said we're going to meet at a coffee shop and get all these people to come there at the same time. Um, you know, that that was that immediate right away. Um, relief that we were just trying to provide people then the case management was shelly's idea <laughs> where she got where the the jesus center took that on and she, uh, debbie and i went on to do that i did a little over a year and she did it for two years debbie did it for two years and um that was more longer term there was still a lot of vetting um and getting people like to a next phase Debbie went into some of the even extended as far as getting people into manufactured homes and that kind of thing. But 
people were a little bit more settled by the time they got to us, still in a lot of trauma and a lot more detailed trauma because we're dealing with their whole picture. It's not just they're at the gas station and they can't drive anywhere and we need to get to the gas station and meet them. Lastly, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you all heard tremendous thanks from people as you were helping them throughout, especially after the campfire. And you feel such an important need in our community um, any of you can feel free to respond to this, but can you remember one thing, one vignette of somebody telling you something that you'll always remember after the after the fire? I actually have one. Um, a man had come into my office and another friend of mine was there because we were buying so many gift cards that we had other people going out and getting them. And she had just come back with $20,000 worth of grocery cards or something. And this guy came in and he wanted to tell his story and he just talked for 15 minutes. And I, and I was a little speechless and he told me the whole story of what had happened to him. And I said, can I at least help you buy clothing or anything? I can give you gift cards. And he said, no, I really just wanted somebody to hear me. Mm. And, it, and I cried. My friend was crying. He was already crying, <laughs> but it he just wanted someone to just listen to his whole story and not ask him for a FEMA number or, or anything. Thank you. I think people after, um, like Peggy bringing that up, the FEMA number is a good reminder that it, you know, it was, it was such a process for people that they were going through kind of a, a routine of going to all these different providers and trying to get help. And ours was immediate. And a lot of times the first person that somebody had seen, they hadn't gone to the disaster center, wasn't open yet. There wasn't all these other things open yet, which is why we met people mm -hmm. in different places. There wasn't a location to go and have a little booth to hand it out. So a lot of it was, um, the very personal, um, the very personal stories. And, um, you know, one of mine was a girl that came into my office who had to leave her mom up there and her mom refused to leave. And that was a, 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 a big cry fest. I think we cried a lot for a very long time, mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah, I can remember after working, going home and we would put up the computer and start answering all the Facebook requests, right? And with each request was a story and it was it was a back and forth conversation, right? What they need, what, how we can help, where can we meet? And you're doing the vetting and then you're trying to set up a meeting. And at the same time, the fire was still happening, right? Smoke is coming in our houses. I'm sitting there with a face mask on and hosting some of my own family members that lost housing up there. So I don't have any one story that stands out because I just remember sitting there for four or five hours each night answering these and doing, you know, putting the gift cards in envelopes. Where are we going to meet? Um, I agree with what these guys are saying. We wanted to help people. And with that came hearing the stories. And also we were living the same experience in a sense down here, right? Watching, there's always, we all knew somebody that uh, was affected by the fire. But when you met the people in person and you handed them that envelope of gift cards, it I don't wanna just say it was rewarding. It was just very, you could just feel their sense of gratefulness, relief, if you will. Holly? Every single person that I handed gift cards to just hugged and cried. Getting emotional, girls, I knew that happened. It was just a really tough time. But I, we'd go to Starbucks, we'd all take turns, like different weeks or something, and get all these gift cards and put people's names on them because we would figure out what the family needed because we would check them out through Facebook, research them, talk to them. I remember my husband, he wouldn't let me go there by myself because I had so many gift cards. So he'd always sit in a corner. <laughs> I'm like, watch. Because he's like, Holly, you don't know what someone's going to do. You know, and we didn't. So it was trusting people and loving people and doing what God asked us to do. Y'all are living proof that uh, the campfire 
in a horrible disaster brought out the best in a lot of people. Um, Chico Posse Foundation was so instrumental in helping this community, this area recover. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Community Foundation for all you've done. Um, and uh, it's been uh, a pleasure watching you work. So thank you.